we need more time to do the practice to understand the Friday's law and the Lenz's law, and we need uh, to go over all of these questions and how to use Friday's law to calculate the magnitude of the uh, induced current and how to use Lenz's law to determine the direction. So I will spend today's class uh, talking about uh, the quiz and also the machine for this question. And if you have any question, you can stop me and I will slow down. So first one, this is a quiz. And on the course side, I cannot uh, mark on your quiz. And I found the, uh, the course side crash yesterday. So I tried to uh, write something on, on your PDF file, but I failed. So I only gave you the, the number of grades. I didn't give you the mark. But that's fine. I will give you the solution and tell you why. So the first one, um, we have uh, we have a wire. In the wire, there is a current, and on the left of the wire, there is a loop, the circular loop, and there is some motion happened, and and we are going to determine if there is induced current inside the loop. Okay. So number one, the loop and the wire are both sitting there and nothing is moving. So if there's nothing moving in the stationary state, there is no induced current. So this is from uh, the experiment and we've, we say that last week, um, if we just put everything stay here on the table and there's no current and the current meter doesn't shoot anything. The needle doesn't turn and uh, nothing happened. So the first one, no. Uh, let me here. So, uh, number one, no, no current. And the second one, if the loop is in motion, moving further away from the wire. Okay, so there's a motion, but not all the motion will induce a current. We want to know if this motion will change the flux. According to the Friday's law, it says if the motion change the magnetic flux, we use the change the flux uh, in a closed circuit then the current will induce, can be induced. Okay, so there are some keywords. The first one, the flux change. The second one should be a closed circuit. If the circuit uh, is not closed, it's open circuit, then we cannot measure the, um, the, the current, okay? So let's determine if the flux change in this motion. So if it's moving further away from the wire and the flux we know is the production of magnetic field times the area of the circuit. And let's see, the area doesn't change during the motion. Yeah. But how about the magnetic field? And the magnetic field in, uh, in the space is generated by the wire. The wire has a current, and we know the magnetic field generated by the current is equal to the mu naught i over two pi r. R is the distance from the center of the loop to the wire. This is r, okay? And we can assume the, the loop is very small, and the, inside the loop, the magnetic field is a uniform distribution. This is just an assumption or uh, approximation. And you will find that if the loop moving further away, if this move to the left, then the R increase. If the R increase, okay, if the R increase, then we will find that the magnetic field into the space decrease, inside of the loop decrease, okay? So if the B decrease, the flux change. Then the answer is yes. 
is the number two. Number three, oh. the loop is in motion, moving upward. Okay. If the loop moving upward, according to the formula, magnetic field equal to the mu non i over two pi r. If the loop moving upward, the r doesn't change. It's constant. Okay. If the r doesn't change, the magnetic field doesn't change. The magnetic field is a constant, and the flux is a constant. So the answer is no. Okay, this is uh, number three. Number four, the wire is in motion, moving closer to the loop. Okay, moving closer, then we know the R, the R decrease, decrease because it's moving close to the, the wire. If the R decreases, then the magnetic field increase. So the answer is yes. Yes, because magnetic field increase. Number five, the loop and the wire are not moving, but the current in the wire is made to change in time. Okay, so the current change. We know the this is a wire, this is a loop, and if the current change, it will make the magnetic field increase. So if I make this one, two pi r, this is a magnetic field. If the i change, then the b change. Right. If the i increase, then the b increase. If the i decrease, the b decrease. So in this case, inside of the the, uh, the loop, the flux change. So the answer is yes. Okay. So if you are confused about the uh, distribution of the magnetic field inside the space, then we can use the right hand row. So if the current goes down, then I use the right hand, my thumb goes down, my forefinger clockwise. If the clockwise, that means on the left side, the magnetic field goes into the page. And on the right side, the magnetic field goes out of the page. And if we go further, the magnetic field decreases. So the density decrease. So, um, this is uh, the distribution of the magnetic field um, surrounding a wire. And if the loop uh, move closer or further, then the magnetic field change. If the current change, then the magnetic field also change. Okay, this is number five. The last one, the last one, I find many uh, problems because this is not uh, a straightforward, but we have to figure out that this is also important. So if the loop uh, rotate around its diameter, the loop and it rotate through the diameter, okay? Then you will find that at the beginning, uh, the magnetic field goes into the page. So the surface of the loop is perpendicular to the um, magnetic field. But we need to determine if it spin, does the surface still perpendicular to the magnetic field? It doesn't, because we know the area and the magnetic field has an angle in between, have an angle in between. And this angle I labeled as theta, the theta is a function of time, the theta change. So in, in a moment, um, they are perpendicular, but in another moment, when the surface is parallel to the magnetic field, the theta is zero degree. So this theta will change through the zero to the 90 degree, then from the 90 degree to the zero degree. 
So in this case, this surface, uh, this loop spin around its diameter, so the angle change. The flux actually is determined by the magnetic field, this is the vector, dot the area, the loop. And the loop is, the area is also a vector. And we uh, define the direction of the area vector is perpendicular to the surface. So if this is an area circle, and the direction will be either up or down, either way, right? If we don't specify which direction is positive, then we can pick up either way. But you should know if we have a magnetic field with another direction, point to another direction, there should be an angle. So that means the flux will be equal to the magnetic field, magnitude, area, also the magnitude times cosine theta. Theta is the angle in between. So when the surface is perpendicular to the magnetic field, theta is zero degree. In that case, the surface is perpendicular to the area and to also perpendicular to the magnetic field, then the vector of A and the vector of B are parallel. So in this case, theta is zero. Then in this case, the flux is maximum. But if the area is, is parallel to the magnetic field, then that means the surface vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field. At that time, theta equal to 90 degree and the flux is zero. Okay, so if the flux is a function of the angle, then that means the flux change over time. So the flux do change, the flux does change. Okay, so there is induced current. The answer is yes. So this is a little bit tricky. Um, so if we talk about spin or the rotation, we have to consider the angle between the magnetic field and the surface. Okay, so any other question? Okay, then I tell you my, my rubrics about this question. So each one is 0.5. And so if you, uh, if you, everything is, is wrong, you will get one point, right? And if you get a one correct answer, then you I add 0.5, so the maximum is four. Okay, so this is a quiz. Next one, I'm going to talk about the Martian physics due yesterday. So let's start from the easiest question. How to determine the direction of the inducer current? Okay, there is a magnetic field is a constant and there is a moving rod. This moving rod move upward and inside of the loop, the magnetic field points out of the page. So first question, what's the direction of the inducer current into the, in the figure? So we're going to use Lenz's law. Then, oh, Lenz's law to determine the direction of induced current. And that's the law said the induced magnetic field oppose, oppose, this is very important, oppose the change, this is the change, the change of the initial magnetic field. Okay, initial magnetic field we know, and the induced magnetic field is going to oppose the change of the initial magnetic field. So let's find the change of the initial magnetic field. If the magnetic field doesn't change, then we're going to change the, the statement. We change this as initial magnetic flux. 
Okay. So that's very important. So next time, uh, we don't talk about the change of initial magnetic field. We talk about the change in magnetic flux. So the magnetic flux in this case decrease, right? If the, the rod uh, move up, then the flux go to B times A decrease. So um, the flux decrease, then the change of the um, direction is goes into the page. So we're going to oppose the decreasing. We want to increase the magnetic field. To increase the magnetic field, my thumb, my right hand, um, is going out of the page. So I open my camera. So you can see uh, if I um, use the right hand and uh, my thumb goes out of the page, so toward me, and my forefinger goes counterclockwise, like this. So this is how we uh, determine the direction. Because the flux decrease out of the page, so we want to increase the flux. To increase the flux, we have to increase the magnetic field. So to increase the magnetic field, my induced magnetic field is going out of the page, so like this. So the current, induced current, is counterclockwise. Okay, that is. Uh, hold on. So counterclockwise. So the answer is counterclockwise. Number two. There is a loop, and this loop moves into the magnetic field with a constant speed. And the speed is 70 meter per second. This is very high speed, right? Um, and let's determine the, the current. We want to know the magnitude of the current inside the loop. So we use Friday's law. The induced current, to determine induced current, we need to know the induced potential difference, right? The potential difference is the derivative of the magnetic flux, right? So the magnetic flux in this case is equal to the magnetic field times the area inside the magnetic field. And we know the magnetic field is a constant. It doesn't change. So the derivative will be uh, B times the derivative of the area. So we take the B out of the derivative and let's determine what's the A here. The A inside the magnetic field is equal to this side. Let me use another color. Equal to this side times this side. This is area. So this side, the top side, is a constant value, right? It's equal to five centimeter. I use L to label the side. But the left side is a function of time. So this is equal to the velocity, the moving velocity times T. T is the time, right? The velocity multiplied by the time. So the area is equal to B multiply of L multiplied by VT. This is area. So the derivative of the area is equal to the LV. Okay. And the change of the potential should equal to the B L V. Magnetic field times the length of the top length times the speed. So the current, the current is equal to the change of the potential over the resistance. This is based on Ohm's law. Right. So 
initially we have everything in organized that will be the BLV over the resistance. So the B in this case is how much is this? B is 0.7 Tesla, 0.7 T. The L is 0.05 meter, okay, 5 centimeter is 0.05 meter. Velocity, 7 meter per second over the resistance. That will be here, 0.1 oh, omega. Okay, this is the current. Then let's see the solution here, 24.5. Next question is, what's the current direction? Direction of the current, let's see. Um, in this motion, the flux increase. Flux increase. So the induced magnetic field is going to oppose this direction. So the induced magnetic flux should decrease. To decrease the flux, we can decrease the magnetic field. And the initial magnetic field is pouring out of the page. So we are going to decrease the magnetic field. The magnetic field induced the magnetic field is going to pour into the page. So pour into the page. So my thumb goes into the page, my fingers and curl clockwise. The thumb point into the page. And my Fingers curl uh, clockwise. Okay, clockwise, so the current goes clockwise. Any other question? So, if not, let me move on to the problem five. So, and just now we talk about the, uh, the change of the area. This time, let's talk about the change of magnetic field, right? The magnetic field point out of the page and increasing, let's determine and which direction of the current. Does the current um, have a clockwise or counterclockwise or there's nothing inside the loop, okay? so. Part A, the magnetic field point out of the page and increasing. So the B increase, B increase, so the flux increase. So there is induced current. Okay. Then let's see. The induced magnetic flux is going to oppose the change of flux. The flux increase, so the induced flux should decrease. To decrease the flux, we want to decrease the magnetic field. To decrease the magnetic field, the induced magnetic field should point into the page. Right. Point into the page, so my thumb point into the page and my fingers curl clockwise. So in the part A, the Direction of the current is clockwise. Flow clockwise. Part B, if the magnetic field is a constant. If this is a constant, the flux doesn't change, so there's no current. Part C, if the magnetic field point out of the page and decreasing, just now the increasing case, the current goes clockwise. So if it's decreasing, then the current flows will goes to the counterclockwise, right? So this is uh, number five. Number seven. 
let's calculate the magnetic field and based on the Friday's law. Okay. So in what are the size of the direction of the induced current? So induced current, to calculate the induced current, we should know the uh, potential difference. Okay. The potential difference is equal to the change of magnetic field flux over the time. And in this case, the uh, area of this loop doesn't change. So A could be O. So A could be take out of the derivative. So we only need to do the derivative of B. Okay. And we know the change of the B is 0.5 Tesla per second. So that will be equal to A times 0.5. This is a voltage or the potential difference, then the induced current will equal to the change of the voltage over uh, the, the resistance. That will be the area times 0.5 over the resistance. The resistance is here, 0.29 ohm. And the area will be pi r squared. The diameter is 29, so the radius will be 15 centimeter times 0.5. Okay, this is uh, part A. Part B, the direction. Okay, the direction we just determine. And let's see this one. Uh, if it decrease, with the same rate, and what's the current? The, if it decreases with the same rate, the magnitude of the inducer magnetic field doesn't change. So that will be the same formula, same number, but the direction of the current will go to the opposite direction. Okay, that's it. Last part. So if the surface of the loop is parallel to the magnetic field, what's induced current inside the loop? So if the, you see, um, to calculate the flux, we have magnetic field dot the area. The area of this loop should perpendicular to the surface. So either goes left or goes right. And you can find that the magnetic field is perpendicular to the direction of the area. So uh, we will have um, we will have b times a times cosine theta. Theta is equal to ninety degree because they are perpendicular. So uh, let me see. If theta is 90 degree, then we have flux is equal to zero. All the time, it's equal to zero. No matter what the magnetic field is, the flux is always equal to zero. So if the flux doesn't change, then the current is, uh, we don't have induced current. Okay. This is number seven. Next one. This, okay. So this is a little bit tricky. Um, the magnetic field doesn't change. Uh, what will change is the surface area. So we are going to calculate the surface area as a function of time. Then we can solve this problem. So you see this loop move to the right and there is a constant magnetic field in this region. And when time equal to zero, the corner, the right corner of this loop uh, reach to the border of the magnetic field. And after the loop enters the magnetic field, there is a small area inside the loop. 
So this is area. And the flux is equal to magnetic field, this is a constant, times the area. But the area is a function of time. Right? So to calculate the area, let's do some simple geometry. Uh, the geology tells us the triangle has an area. This is a border. This is a, the loop. So we only need to know the height of the triangle, this length. The length enters the magnetic field is equal to the velocity times the time, right? V times T. And this is the length of, from this corner to the center of the border. Then the area of this triangle is equal to the Vt square. Right. You can move this region here, then you get a small square. This region is equal to this region. Oh, what's wrong? Um, so, Hold up, my, uh, my pad just crashed. Let me reconnect it. Um, pad crash. Hmm. Okay, let me use my computer. Um, just now we talk about the uh, uh, this area here. Okay. We have the area, and the area is here. I put and the border and I change another color. Okay, you can find that. Um, we are going to calculate this area and this area actually is equal to uh, V times T. This is a, the length from this corner to the center of the border, right? So the area will be, the area will be the A equal to the V times T square, like this area. And A times equal to V T, then the flux, flux will be equal to A, times the B, right? The A equal to VT square. So that will be V square, T square, and times B. This is area times the magnetic field, this region. Okay. Then the, the current here, the current will be the derivative of flux, um, in this case, then that will be, we do the derivative of V square, T square, and B. Then we have two times B, V square, times T. This is the derivative of the, of the I. So that means if we have, uh, have to plug the, the diagram of the current, for example, and the x-axis is the time, and the y-axis is the current. So the, the current will be the linear relation of the time. I put here, the i is proportional to the time. That will be, uh, let me see, one, this one. Okay, I is proportional to the 
So the time is a linear relation. So when this um, this area start from here and the current is zero, then the current increase, 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 and when the loop goes to half of the uh, the area, then it goes to the maximum. Then the current decrease, 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 and at here, when all the loop are inside the magnetic field, the current goes to zero. And no matter where it moves, the frog doesn't change, so the current is zero. So the frogs um, and the current should have this relation. If we find the relation um, I of t, so at the beginning it starts from zero and increase to the maximum, then it hold up. Then it goes from maximum to zero. So they should be symmetric. And when does it go to the maximum? Because uh, if this area goes to half of the way, so this one, yeah, when this border is overlapped with the diagonal, goes to half of the way of this loop, then it goes to the maximum. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the surface area. And uh, also we have the relation from the I goes to T. And also, um, how to determine the maximum of the current. The maximum of the current actually um, could be calculated from this relation. You know the magnetic field, you know the velocity. The only thing you don't know is the time. When does it go to the maximum? But we know the length from this corner to the center. Let me insert a line here from the center to the corner. Use another color, make it wider. Okay, from this corner to the center of the border, this is equal to half of the diagonal. Right? We know this length um, is 10 centimeter. Let me check the number. Yeah, the same 10 centimeter. The length is 10 centimeter. It's 10 centimeter. So the diagonal will be 10 times square root 2, square root 2 centimeter. This is uh, diagonal. I thought the diagonal was the 10 centimeters. Oh, hold on. Ah, uh, no, no, no. The side of the, the, the side of the square is 10 centimeter. This side is 10 centimeter. And the diagonal is 10 to 10 times the square root two. Okay. okay. So there's a 10 times square root two. So the half of the diagonal will be five. Okay, then we have the L. Then to determine the T, when it goes to the maximum, we use uh, this side over the speed. So here, T halfway T half and will be the five times square root two over the speed. This is uh, halfway. Then we have the time, then we plug into this equation. We get the I maximum. Okay, so that is. And let me go to the next next question. Next question will be uh, if you have computer, um, I'm going to uh, talk about the problem nine. Ah. Okay, 
product. Let me open my my cool site. Master and critics. Give me a second. Problem night here. <clears> the <throat> so, uh, there is a coral and the big coral and inside the coral there is a small solenoid and the solenoid has 200 turns and the big coral has uh, 40 turns so this is um, a two coral problem and we have the solenoid we know the function of the current and if we have uh, the induced current is point zero uh, the 0.2 ampere, then what's uh, the ion is. So we're going to determine what's the ion, and if we know the user current is 0.0. Okay. So um, this is a question talking about um, uh, talking about the, the coral, and we can find that um, and use another screen. I use my notebook. So here, um, there is a coil. This is a big coil, and this is a 40 turn. And we have a small solenoid inside. This is a small solenoid. And the solenoid has 200 turn. Okay, this is a um, question, and the question also said, uh, let me check. What we know is the current inside the solenoid is I non sine 2 pi f times t. And we want to know um, if the solenoid has a current the solenoid has a current equal to uh, 0.2 ampere. What's the I now? Okay. So to determine the, the current inside solenoid, we should know the potential difference in the solenoid. The so potential in the solenoid here, the flux or uh, the magnetic field. Let me determine the flux. The magnetic field first. Inside our solenoid, the magnetic field has this relation. If you still know um, the equation sheet, I show you. The equation sheet is here. Here. And um, for the solenoid, you can find that the magnetic field is a function of the current and it's a function of the number of turns and the length of L. So we are going to use this relation. The B is equal to the mu num, uh, number of turn, number of the solenoid and current inside the solenoid over the length of solenoid. This is the magnetic field inside the solenoid. Okay, if we look from the left, this is my eye, I look from the left, then we have a small solenoid, and inside the solenoid, there's a magnetic field. 
And out of the solenoid, there's no magnetic field, but there is a big coil, right? So we want to calculate the flux inside the coil. The flux inside the coil will be equal to the magnetic field inside the coil times the area of the um, of the coil. But here you want to see there's no magnetic field outside the solenoid. So we have to use the area of the solenoid, the area of the solenoid times the magnetic field inside the solenoid plus the magnetic field out of the solenoid times the area times out of the solenoid. And we know out of the solenoid, the magnetic field is equal to zero. So this goes to zero. So the total flux will be this one times the number of turns of the coil. Okay, so we will have mu num, number of the solenoid, number of the coil times current over the length of solenoid. And also the area of the solenoid. This is the flux of the coil. Then the current inside the flux, uh, the, the current induced in the coil will be the change of the flux of the coil over time. Then we know um, mu nine is a constant, there's a constant, 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 constant. The only thing will change is the current. So that will be the mu nun, ns, nc, a of the solenoid over the length of solenoid, then change of the current, derivative of the current. The current we know is here. So that will be equal to the i nun cosine turn to a sine 2 pi ft times 2 pi f. And if we only care about the maximum of the current, then we can remove the cosine function. Okay. We can remove this because we only care about the maximum of the voltage. The maximum of the voltage is equal to this. And the induced current will be the maximum voltage over the resistance. So that will be mu nun ns and c area of solenoid i nun 2 pi f over the length of solenoid over the resistance. Okay, and it says the maximum or induced current in the coil is 0 to ampere. So we can go to solve the I nun. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what I'm going to talk today. I think um, the biggest problem is how to use the change of flux to calculate the uh, magnetic field, uh, the, to calculate the induced current and use Lenz's law to determine the direction of the current. And on Friday, we are going to talk about the Maxwell's equation and how to use um, a change magnetic field and a change of electric field um, to, help, uh, to get the other field. Okay, so I will see you on Friday. And on the course side, you will see uh, the first hour exams grades and we finish it. If you have any question about the rubrics, about the grading, you can send me the email. Okay, that's all.